Hey there, welcome to episode 112 of The Daily Shed. And today I'm gonna to show you the whole tone scale. And this will just be a bit of introduction. Uh, entire books have been written on this subject. But I'm just gonna introduce it to you. Um, it's a pretty unusual scale. And the main thing that makes it unusual is that um, the whole scale, it's called, it's a, it's a symmetric scale. There's a handful of symmetric scales. The same distance between every note in the entire scale. And first I'll just show you just going up one string and then I'll show you the two octave version. Go up one string starting on F, play F, G, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, F, like that. You, and right away it sounds very unusual. It doesn't sound like any major or minor scale you've probably ever encountered. And it's useful for a couple different things, especially if we're playing uh, over an augmented chord a pretty unusual kind of chord uh, that can be used, very useful in certain contexts. And also uh, jazz players and other players who play more uh, a lot of improvised music will use this sometime to play outside the key and then come back inside the key. Today I'm going to show it to you uh, sort of in the context of just stretching your fingers. It makes for a nice exercise um, while also providing just a nice uh, kind of a cool thing to know. Uh, the scale is also Interesting in that it's often used um, for like a dream sequence. If you, in Disney movies, if you see like someone playing like a harp for like a dream sequence, they're usually playing a whole tone scale. Something like that. It's a very, because it doesn't have any key center in it, it's very sort of ungrounded and sort of dreamlike. Like that. So the two octave version, uh, I'll show it to you first in the key of A. So, starting in the 5th fret, 5th, 7th, ninth fret on the G E string, then 6th fret on the A string, 8th fret in the A string, and on the D string, 5th fret, 7th fret, ninth fret, under the G string, 6th fret and 8th fret, on the B string, same thing, 6th fret, 8th fret, high E string, 5th, 7th, and ninth again, so... It's just either E string, you're either playing the 5th, 7th, ninth frets, or the 6th and 8th frets, so... A very strange scale, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't have any particular chord associated uh, with it. Again... And it's a nice stretch. Um, just to get your fingers moving in a bit of, in a bit of a different way, and for the most stretching, go down and play it in F. And so in F, you're doing one, three, five. This is the frets: first fret, third fret, fifth fret, A string, second fret, fourth fret, D string, first, third, and fifth, G string, second and fourth, B string, second and fourth, high E string, first, third, fifth. Okay. So pretty abstract but a great little stretching exercise, uh, again. And you can take some shortcuts uh, by skipping some notes. You can you come up with some pretty cool patterns like this. Like this. So you're going to seventh, ninth, and the next string, sixth, eighth, tenth, next string, seventh, ninth, eleventh, like that. Those are all notes in the whole tone scale. You're skipping a couple notes. But, but it's okay. Like that. You can keep on going. And keep on going like that. And uh, it's a pretty cool exercise also to just find the whole tone scale. Anyway, start on any note and just go a whole step in any direction. Keep going just with a whole step between each each note. And the whole step is two frets. So to start anywhere and go up two frets. And then you want to go up, you know, on the, even on the next string. It's the same as two frets up. And just find it. Find that whole tone scale anyway. So it's a pretty abstract concept, but at the very least makes for, for a great stretching exercise. And in future lessons I'll be showing more about how to actually use this while soloing. I hope it's useful and fun to you. As always, let me know any comments or questions you may have, and thank you for watching.